We are continuing our work with ordinary objects looking for planes and angles. And we have here a food takeout box. This is kind of a variation on doing the paper bag, the crumpled up paper bag, and I'll show you why in a minute. But there are several things we can, several directions we can go with this. We can just do the box as it is because it has some wonderful shapes. Let's see if I can get a nice composition here. Part of the trick is setting it up so that it has an interesting shape. But there's all these strange edges and corners, so there's lots of angles to look for. So I'm going to move my paper over here, and I could just do a straight box. Get this in view. And again, if I start with this uh, piece of broken off graphite, I can find my angles first. And I see I'm going to run off the page here a little bit, but that's okay because part of the fun of, oops, I have my trusty eraser here. So I can take out anything that doesn't work. Um, is just simply finding the shapes and see if we, seeing if I can make an interesting composition with them, whether it looks um, realistically like a box or not. Because all these different shapes, it has it ends up to be kind of an abstract um, looking thing anyway. Move this over a little bit so you can see. I think I'm going to make part of my composition this wonderful shadow down here because I can't see the bottom of the box so I'll put my dark in by doing the shadow and that flat part of the box is pretty light, so I'm going to leave that edge. And the shadow kind of continues on the other side. And then I'll go in again with my pencil, my graphite pencil, and just kind of define the edges. And that's a little strong for the far edge because things that are at a distance are lighter or uh, more correctly less distinct, so I'm not going to define that quite as well. Then we have an interesting indentation here, which is indicated by just a kind of shadow. So I'm going to make that very light. And this whole uh, plane here is darker than this plane here that faces the light. There's a window over here, so I'm going to just indicate, and if I wanted a really smooth graded tone here, I would probably go very carefully like this with a crosshatch, but I don't want to take a lot of time to do that. I just want to indicate that this plane is darker than this plane. And then down here we have this interesting little tuck where there's a shadow of that box. And then we see the tuck here. There's another little interesting shadow. It's a little thinner, a little lighter. And right here on the edge, to define that edge, it's a little darker tone just to define where this plane that is away from the light meets this plane which is facing the light. So that would be one way to go, to do 
um, a more representative um, image there. Another way to go is to take the box apart. And then we really have some interesting possibilities. Um, it's easy to get tripped up in the complexity, so I would want to pick something that's fairly simple. But again, this could be a lot of fun in finding shapes and tone and planes. Here's one I worked on earlier, sort of, uh, sort of representative, but kind of loose back in here where the parts of the box were in shadow. I didn't want to get real defined with those so that these front parts would really pop. Now another project we'll work on now is um, in color, and that's with ribbon. Ribbon is another common object that gives us lots of opportunities to look for angles and planes, but the challenge in ribbon is that the planes will be rounded. So this is in fact one plane. This is a plane facing the light. And here is another plane and it's darker because it's going away from the light. But this is not a sharp edge. If we were to lay it over something, see if I can get this to look like this, like the box, we see the, the uh, plane facing the light up here and then where it turns down away from the light there's a sharp delineation of light and dark but a ribbon what makes a ribbon look like a ribbon is that it's curved so those changes in planes if you want to be very representative about it have to be softer they're not sharp edges they're soft so the first trick is to what we call pose the ribbon, pose the model or the muse, which is the role that the ribbon is playing here. And so to get an interesting but not too complicated um, image here. And the other challenge is these twists to make those really look like they're twisting. So I'm going to start with an orange. Well, I have to get it off my drawing paper here. And go lightly so that I can erase. So I have one curve here. And then I have the thickness of the ribbon here. And it disappears into that curve. And then it continues around here. So this little intersection here, you might even spend the whole time just figuring out how to do those little intersections because that's what really makes it look ribbon-esque. So this part is facing the light because my window is over there. So I'm going to keep that light and just do the orange even though this is a red ribbon because I'll want to go darker down here where the ribbon is facing away from the light and be able to grade the dark into the light there. So I will take the red and I'm going quickly here, so I'm not worrying about my edges right now. Then right about here is where that plane break is, but it's very soft and graded where it goes into the light. So when I get to that point, I'm going to 
lighten up on my pencil so that I can make that and this is very dark in here again I'm going quickly here I might go a little more carefully if I was doing this on my own without the time restriction there's also I see a little darkness along the top here and then it goes it continues to get a little bit darker as we go along here so you can see how the tones continually change and that's what makes a satin ribbon look like a satin ribbon so I'm going to take the orange now and work that doing the blending as we talked about earlier and work that into that transition. We call that a plain break. And this is very similar to forms on the human body because there are planes on the face, but because there's muscle and fat in there, um, some of the plane breaks are very soft. So we have to learn how to um, grade those. So I'm going to just work back and forth here till I get the uh, the look that I want and the balance of dark and light that I need. And that is a quick rendition of a colored ribbon.